Hi! This tutorial shows how to move about in Blue, how you can rescale objects and automation lines, and copy and paste the objects and automation lines. These features have been implemented in Blue version 2.8.0, and that makes it an important release. Here we have two simple instruments a saw wave instrument, and the second instrument produces noise. The first instrument, the saw wave instrument, is soloed, so you will hear only this one. It's a very simple instrument. It produces a two-note saw wave. Saw waves contain a lot of upper harmonics. In the mixer strip, I added a low-pass filter so that we can tame all those upper harmonics a bit, by varying the cutoff frequency and also by changing the resonance of the filter while playing. Let's have a listen of how the instrument and filter sound. When looking for a sound, I tend to set a loop and loop that sound repeatedly and make changes as I go. Shortcut for loop is Ctrl L. Setting the loop a bit shorter. hear the filter creating some sort of frequency steps. Let's stick with that, that's nice. Now let's rescale the automation line of the frequency cutoff. We only want to change this particular automation line, so we change to single line mode. There is a shortcut for that, key number two. In order to rescale the automation line, we do shift and make a selection around the part that we want to rescale. It is only this automation line that will change, others stay untouched. In the middle of the selection you see the automation line point and it's changing position now. If you don't want that and you want to keep that point at the start of the object, select again but from the start position of that object. Now that automation line point remains in place. Ctrl Z is the undo function if you don't like the latest changes. Undoing once, undoing twice, and Bob's your uncle. Next thing I want to show you is how to rescale the selected object and two automation lines of instrument one. We have to go to multi-line mode, and there is a shortcut for it, number 3. Now we have rescaled everything inside the marquee. Just hit spacebar for playing or stopping. And again. All right. Let's undo everything back to square one. There is yet another automation line representing values for the resonance of the filter. We hit two and go to single line mode. You can see the cutoff frequency automation line is still active. The dark entry is the one active. We choose the other automation line, the resonance of the filter. We are going to increase the resonance, activating the loop, we add two points to the automation line, here and here, and that's a nice little pop, a popping sound that I like. Let us stick with that one for the moment, love it. Let's rescale the whole lot somewhat. We push the 3 on the keyboard, then make a selection of object and the automation line by holding shift and drag the marquee to the right. Hitting the spacebar to hear the result. Works nicely! Lovely pop! We deselect by clicking elsewhere in the timeline. Okay. Let's hit number 2, so we can add a few more automation line points to the resonance automation line. 
one there. And another one there. We hit play. Ouch! That hurts. Too much resonance there. Now that's better. Well, that sounds nice. Well, perhaps a bit slow. Let's rescale everything and shorten it by pressing 3, multi-line mode. Making a selection with shift and drag the marquee. Oops, one more time. Let's make them short this time. Hit space tab. Already lots of movements in the sound. Interesting, and I still love the popping end. Now let's add more movement by adding yet again some points and change the points in the selection. Make the selection using shift, then drag. Then while holding the control key, we can drag all the points inside the marquee up a little. Moving it just a little bit now. Now let's destroy all of the resonance changes. We go shift and drag, make the selection, then hit the delete key, and it's all gone. Okay, the low pass filter effect is assigned to instrument one. A new automation line will control the bypass function of the effect to switch it on or off. We are pressing the A button here. A menu pops up. Choose Mixer, Instrument 1, Post Effects, the filter and all its controllers. So let's choose the on switch here, so a new automation line is born. When right clicking, a menu is shown, showing the dark text LPF18 on. You can see it here on the left as well. Right, making a selection in multi-line mode to select end object and automation lines. Let's drag it to the right and play. We go back to single line and do something with the bypass automation line. Let's go and switch off the low pass filter in the middle of the object. Switching off here and switching back on here. Next thing I want to demonstrate is moving and copying. Press 3 and let's move everything over to the right. Make a nice selection, shift and drag the marquee over several layers. You can switch on and off the snap function. When off, you can move about freely. Or, without the shift key, select automation lines and move them over to here. Copying of the automation line done by Ctrl C and then clicking on the spot where you want to paste, move them over to the left a bit and let's have a listen. In this case, we will hear some noise. Also with the cutoff filter. Okay, let's move over to this section. Pressing 2 for single line mode, choosing a different automation line called cutoff A. I want to move over this section a bit now. 
So shift and make the selection, all those points, and drag them to the left. I want to rescale this section a bit, making it compact. Hit spacebar. This is a piece I'm working on, containing audio and instruments. Scrolling up and down can be accomplished by moving the scroll button on the mouse. An important tool to move quickly through the piece is something called the navigator. There's a tiny, what I call, loop. Click on it and the navigator window pops up. This navigator allows for some quick moving about in the composition. The image in the navigator mimics in real time where you are in the composition. Let's zoom in a bit using Alt and scroll. Let's focus on this portion. There's lots going on here in this section. It's a busy place. I will put some markers around this section I will be working on. First I click so the green line appears on that spot. Then Ctrl M on the keyboard and a marker comes to life. And I create a second marker to mark the end of the section. Let's give them names. Press Shift and F4. A new window opens. This is the marker list. Here I change the name marker 12 to begin. And marker 13 will be End. Now markers begin and end are set and I can do some work here. Several markers are already created. The open bracket guides you to previous markers. And of course the close bracket takes you towards the end of the markers. When there are no more markers left at the very end of the composition, the last spot it stops will be the very end of the last object. On the right there is a small window, the snap. Here you can activate by clicking or pressing Alt S. Just turn it on or turn it off. Back to the markers. They react to the snapping function as well, so you can move them or right-click if you want to remove this marker. Here a marker is set to indicate the start of the piece. I want the piece to start at that spot. At the moment it starts too late, so let's fix that. Select the object and, very carefully, press the arrow key. The object moves just a little bit to the left and I won't stop until I think it's perfect. Until next time, bye!